About six months ago, I did a review video on this power supply. And while it works, it has three flaws that kind of drive me a little crazy. And that is because of the way it's designed. All of the control and regulation is done on the primary side. So the drawback to that is some laggy response. For example, adjusting the voltage. It's very slow at finding the set voltage because of the lag from all the capacitors it has to go through. That lag in response also affects the current. So here we have our run-of-the-mill LED. I have the current set to uh, 60 milliamps, 66 milliamps. So that's limiting the current, which it does work. But now I'll increase the voltage and it's, it's locked into constant current, which is doing what it's supposed to do. But now if I just disconnect it and reconnect it, it just blew out the LED because the current can't react fast enough. It, it discharges the capacitors at whatever current they want to discharge at, and then it regulates. So there's a delay in current regulation also. And the final annoying thing with this is it has to have some current to function. So right around, I'll try to just eyeball 12 volts right around this area here. And you can see it's dropping because I have the current set to zero. So you have to bump up the current a little bit just to get the power supply to work. And there, see it kind of, to get, it was laggy in response. So there has to be some current for it to work. Normally power supplies are not like that. But we're gonna make this one better. We are going to, do some modifications and take it from one of the crappiest power supplies I've ever used to one of the best power supplies I've ever used. So we're going to go ahead and try to install this. My plan is to keep the power board. This is 60 volts at 5 amps. So I'm going to keep this. I'm going to keep the case, keep the fan, the socket, but set this to run at full 60 volts, full 5 amps and then replace the front half with this, and then this will now be doing the regulation, which is all done on the secondary output side. So it should be spot on, and all those annoying little quirks should be gone. And I think this will fit pretty darn nicely right in the same case. Might take a little bit of nudging, but we'll see. In order to make the power supply go to maximum settings without the front face, we have to simulate the voltage divider, so four pins, and they're labeled right here. The bottom ones that we need to worry about, there's an R, A, V, and G. R is your plus five supply. The A and V is your amperage and voltage input of the voltage divider, and G is ground. That's why I used, uh, I think it's approximately, I think I used 7.5 ohms, but anyways, eight ohms is close enough to pull up and 5.3 to 5.K to pull down, and that's what I've done here. So this is what it will look like without the lid. I did have to push the board back, which meant I had to mount the fan externally. I think that will be okay because the cord sticks out anyways. So the fan is still functional. And here is the front display. We have the 60 volts input, which is perfect. It's exactly what it's supposed to be. And here it's taking the temperature. It has the uh, probe that came with it and it's wedged right next to the MOSFETs, right in between the two MOSFETs. And if you blow up your MOSFETs, here's a part number K3569. 
All right, so here it is assembled. I moved the little rubber feet to the side, which is now the bottom, and this is what it looks like. There's the fan sticking out in the back there. And unfortunately, I did have to make a cut in the case just because this was a tiny bit too big. So that's what it looks like. Not too bad, works for me. So I've been fiddling around with this thing for a little while. I gotta say, I really like it. Um, start by turning it on. This is the Wi-Fi setup. I haven't set up the Wi-Fi yet, so I'm not sure how that works. Let's play with the output. I'm just gonna start with some basic things. I'm gonna set the voltage at one volt and turn it on. Okay, 0.993. I don't know what's off. It could be my meter. It could be the uh, power supply. Let's try a higher number. Let's try 25 volts, enter. And there's 24.93. Add maximum, we'll do 60. Uh, what did it have in your voltage? Six zero enter. Hmm, wonder why it won't let me do 60. Let's do uh, 55. Okay, it's let me do 55. Let's just um, use the knob here to go up as high as it would go. Oh, 59.38. Wonder why it won't let me go any higher. Hmm. Well, that's interesting. It seems to hit a wall there at 59.38. I suppose the device itself needs the voltage, the drop between the input of 62 and the max of 59. Yeah, I don't know. That's weird. Okay, I think I see why I'm kind of hitting a wall at the 59.38 volts. The input power that this is seen is 60.38. So it's putting up a wall at 59.38. So I guess it needs a one volt drop or a one volt difference between the input and the output. So I guess that uh, that makes sense. Here I've switched over to current on the meter. I have it set at 10 volts at one amp. So let's see how close we are to one amp. Okay, point. 987, good enough for me. Let's try the maximum. Now the power board has a maximum of five amps, but this controller has a maximum of six. So I'm just gonna set the current to five, which is pushing the power board uh, to its max. And let's see what happens at uh, short at five amps. Okay, and it does it. Um, and this, I, I love how it shows the uh, wattage too. That's, that's really like that. Here I've switched the screen over to the graph mode so you can see it's graphing the voltage and the current. So if I shut it off, you'll see it take a dip, turn it back on, it will rise back up again. And then if I disconnect, it will shoot up the voltage and jump down the current. Because I have it set to a max of 3.2. So there it, in the graph, you can see it bounced up and the current dropped down when I disconnected it. Now this green post is not chassis ground. That is the dedicated battery charger port. So that will automatically detect a battery. See the little red uh, battery indicator light up. And when I push on, it should turn green. So it shows it's charging. So what this post offers is uh, automatic shutdown once it reaches 10 milliamps or below and reverse polarity protection and under voltage protection. So if your lithium is under a couple of volts, it won't let you charge, uh, but you still have to manually set the voltage and the current to charge whatever style of battery you're charging. Let's do the LED test that I did on the old power supply. We'll see how well this controls, how, how quickly it can control current. So let's limit the current to 20 milliamps. All right, so we're maxed out at 20 milliamps. It's still set to 10 volts. Now I should be able to turn this on. And there, we have an LED lit. And it didn't uh, completely complete the LED, so that's good. It's actually controlling itself. Let's bump up the voltage. Uh, we'll do 15. Enter. Okay, so even though it's set to 15, it's limited at 20 milliamps, so it's actually running the two volts. And I can turn it on and off without it uh, discharging capacitors and, and forcing more than the set current. So I'm just gonna do it right here instead of, uh, I'll let see the voltage is ramping up to 15. 
and it's it's bringing that voltage down fast enough uh, that the LED can survive. So this is nice. It's much better than the original uh, control, which would just blow the LED up. I'm going to do the same test, but I'm going to switch over to the other display mode. Enter. Come on, is that is that enter? I think so. Let's turn off. Let's see your shift menu. Shift menu. How do I get out of the menu? There. This acts as the escape button. Now we're in the Barcraft mode. And I'm just going to ramp up the... I try to get it in the center of the graph. Okay. So now I'm going to let the voltage build to 15. It's going to blow off of the chart. I'm just curious what the current's going to look like. Yeah, the current doesn't spike. At least in this small of a graph anyways. You can see the voltage doing its thing when I disconnect it and let it ramp up to 15. But the current is staying steady, so that is cool. This has a memory function mode, so let's say, for example, I want to set a 3 volt at uh, 20 milliamp, which it's already at, uh, memory setting maybe for testing LEDs or whatever. I can store it under memory 1, store current data, yes. So now anytime I uh, go to memory 1, there it is, a 3 volts at 20 milliamps. And you have, I think, uh, up to 9 memory settings, so that's cool. Now I did pay the extra few bucks on this one to get the Wi-Fi version and uh, I'm not going to go through that in this video. I haven't set up the Wi-Fi yet, but there is a Android app and a PC version which gives you a control panel to do all kinds of stuff with, but I don't have the time to set that up now. But uh, mainly it's in and done and um, yeah, these are right, right around 50 bucks for this uh, control panel. You know, you're just getting just the front half. I will have an affiliate link down below if you want to check it out. I got this from Banggood. It'll probably start showing up on eBay eventually. But uh, it uh, it's cool, man. It's uh, It gets my vote. Um, well, it wraps up this one. We'll see you guys later.